Okay, so this is the first uh, of the videos in our final topic for the year um, and the topic is probability and in this video we're going to be just looking at a review of um, general probability including um, notation and things like that. So just a few um, key sort of points and definitions and notations to talk through first. So obviously um, probability is the mathematical study of chance and probability is measured for, on a scale from 0 to 1 where a probability of 0 means that something's impossible and a probability of 1 means that it's certain, it definitely will happen. Um, we would usually measure, um, give probability, so obviously your probability should always be a value between 0 and 1, so if ever you find that probability equals 1.2, you've done something wrong. Um, you should generally give probabilities as decimals or fractions. If they're fractions, they should always be in simplest form. If they're decimals, they should be exact decimals. So if you've had to round off your decimal, then you should be writing your answer as a fraction rather than as a decimal. Um, we wouldn't generally give a probability as a percentage unless it was explicitly asked for. Okay. Um, sample space of a probability experiment is the set of all the possible outcomes that could happen. So for example, if a regular die is um, rolled and the number on the uppermost face is noted, the sample space would be all the numbers from 1 to 6. Okay? Um, and when we list a sample space, we usually list it in curly brackets because technically a sample space is a set of numbers or a set of things. Um, we'll talk more, much more about set notation more formally next year. Um, an event is a subset of the sample space that's of interest. Okay, so for example, one might be interested in rolling an even number when a regular die is rolled, and then the event rolling an even number would contain the outcomes two, four, six. Um, it could just be the event could be rolling a six, in which case the event has just one contains just one outcome. The probability of an event A is written PR brackets A. So if you're trying to work out the probability that A happens, you would write PR brackets A equals 0.7 or whatever it might be. And the number of outcomes in event A is denoted in A. Okay, so um, that distinction's sort of important. For an experiment um, in which all the outcomes are equally likely to occur, the theoretical probability can be calculated um, as, so the probability of a particular event is the number of outcomes in that event divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So for example, the probability of rolling a 5 or a 6, there are two outcomes in the event that we're interested in, 5 or 6, out of 6 possible outcomes in the sample space, and so the probability simplifies to one third. So that's an example of, if you were to get that as a decimal, that's a recurring decimal. The only way to write that as a decimal would be to write it as 0.3 recurring. It wouldn't be correct if you gave that answer as 0.33. If you've just rounded it off to two decimal places for no reason, if the question didn't tell you to, then that wouldn't be a correct answer to the question. So just leave it as a fraction. Um, where it's not possible to calculate a theoretical probabil probability, we could calculate an experimental probability by using the observations from an experiment. And in that, in that case, the probability of an event would be the number of times the desired outcome is observed when I repeat the experiment over the total number of trials that I've conducted. Okay, so um, if I'm interested in a common um, example in textbooks is this, if you're um, flipping a thumbtack, it can either land flat down on its, so a thumbtack meaning a, something you push into a pinboard, um, it can either land flat down on its um, bottom, so it can either land sort of something like this, or it can land kind of on its side like that. Um, so obviously theoretically we can't work out the probability of either of those things happening, but if we were to toss a thumbtack a hundred times, the number of times we saw it land like this divided by the total number of tosses that we did would give us the probability or an experimental probability of the thumbtack landing in this way. Um, obviously the more trials we do, the more times we would toss the thumbtack, the more accurate our probability should be. Okay. So another example, an experiment is conducted in which the colour of cars passing through an intersection is noted. During the three hour experiment, 200 cars were observed and 33 of them were red. And so therefore we might infer that the probability of a red car is 33 out of 200 or 0.165. Now just to be clear, 33 out of 200 as a decimal is exactly 0 0.165. So there's nothing wrong with decimals if you haven't rounded them off, okay? But if you round it off, then um, you've changed its value, sorry. Um, and so it's not equal to the same thing. So only round if you're told it to, if you're told to. I.e. the probability that a red car was observed during the experiment was 0 0.165, okay? And from that, if we, if we had perhaps sat there for longer and observed more than 200 cars, we might be able to make a greater inference that that might um, that probability, experimental probability corresponds to the actual proportion of red cars on the road. 
So as it says here, if a large number of trials were used in an experiment, then the probability calculated is called the long run proportion. And we might infer that that's um, a valid probability for the entire population of cars. So for example, if we were to observe 10,000 cars over a period of few, a few weeks, our experimental probability is more likely to match the actual probability that a car in Australia is red. Okay, let's just work our way through some examples. Um, a standard die is rolled and the number displayed uppermost is noted. How many different outcomes are possible with a single roll of the die? Okay, so we can get six outcomes with the standard die. One, two, three, four, five, or six. Are all the outcomes equally likely? Yes, if it's a standard die, so not a biased die. So you're looking for question, in questions, you're looking for things like something was selected randomly or chosen at random, or it's a fair die or a fair coin, which is implying that the outcomes are all equally likely to happen. Okay. Um, so are the outcomes equally likely to happen, or in this case, the standard die? Yes, they are. List the sample space from a single roll of the die. Okay, so we use curly brackets to list the sample space, and we list all the outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. What is the probability of rolling a six? So the probability of rolling a six, there is one six out of six possible outcomes, and so that is a probability of one sixth. What is the probability of rolling an odd number? There are three odd numbers, one, three, and five, out of six possible um, outcomes in the sample space, and so therefore the probability is one half. Probability of rolling a multiple of three. Okay, three and six are both multiples of three, and so that is two outcomes out of six possible outcomes, simplifying our fraction, so a probability of one third. Okay, example two. A letter is chosen at random from the word mathematical. Find the probability that the letter is, etc., etc. Okay, so let's first of all work out how many letters there are to choose from. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so 12 outcomes. Imagine it's like 12 Scrabble tiles in a bag with those letters on them. Find the probability and it says the letter is chosen at random. So the implication there is each one of those 12 letters is equally likely to be chosen. So the probability that the letter is a C there is one C out of the 12 outcomes, so 1 12th. Probability that the letter is an M. Okay, there are two M's out of the 12 outcomes, and so that's a probability of 1 6th. Find the probability that the letter is a vowel. Okay, so vowels, A, E, I, O, U. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 vowels, so probability of a vowel five vowels out of 12 vowels, out of 12 letters, sorry, so five on 12, and the probability that the letter is not a vowel. Okay, so if there were five vowels and 12 letters, seven of the letters must not be vowels, so seven out of 12, okay. Note that this is something we call the complement. This is the complement of the probability of a vowel, so not a vowel is the complement of vowel, and together those two things should add to one. So therefore, if we want to work out the probability of not a vowel, that's going to be one minus the probability of a vowel. And one is 12 twelfths, take away five twelfths, and so seven twelfths. So that's an important sort of idea. The notation we use for that is, so probability of um, not a, a dash, is one minus the probability of a and not A is the complement of A. I'm sure that'll come up uh, in a later video as well. Okay, example three. Um, a survey is conducted in a suburban street where the number of residents in each household is recorded. The results of the survey are displayed in the table below. Now, the table I gave you in your printed booklet was incomplete, apologies. So can we fill in those um, black numbers I've already written into the table there? Um, yeah, I just forgot to, well, it wasn't complete before I printed it. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that there are four households where um, there's only one person that lives in the household in this particular street, eight households where two people live in the house, six households where three people live in the house, ten households where four people live in the house, and two households with five people in the house. So what is the maximum number of residents per household in this street? Okay, well that would be five. If there was any more than five, there would be another cell here in the table. Um, how many homes are in the street? Okay, so we can add up the total frequency. So four plus eight is 12 homes, plus another six is 18 homes, um, plus 10 is 28 homes, plus two is 30 homes. So there's 30 homes in the street. 
cut C, if a home on the street is randomly selected, so again, each of the 30 houses is equally likely to be selected, is what that word random is telling you, what is the probability that there is only one resident? Okay, so probability of one resident. There are four households containing only one resident out of the 30 possible households. Simplifying, that is two fifteenths. If a home on the street is randomly selected, what is the probability that there is at most two residents? I'm sorry. So probability at most two residents. That means we could have one or two residents. Okay, so that would be four, four households with one resident plus eight households with um, two residents. So they would be all the households with at most two residents out of 30. So it's 12 out of 30, okay, which is six out of 15. Uh, which simplifies further, sorry I should have recognised 6 was a common factor, um, so it's 2 out of 5. If a home on the street is randomly selected, what is the probability that there are more than 3 residents? Okay, so probability of more than 3. So more than 3 doesn't include 3, so more than 3 residents in this case means 4 or 5 residents. So there are 10 households with 4 residents plus another 2 households with 5 residents out of 30, so that is also 12 out of 30, which simplifies to two fifths. If a home on the street is randomly selected, what is the probability that there are six residents? Probability of six residents, or well, there are no houses with six residents, zero out of 30 houses, and so the probability is zero, it's impossible. Part G, if a home on the street is randomly selected, what is the probability that there are five or fewer residents? Well, all of the households have five or fewer residents. So that's 30 out of 30 households, which is a probability of one. It's certain that the household selected will have five or fewer residents. Okay, and the fourth and final example. In a fairground game, competitors are asked to throw a dart at a board as pictured opposite. If they get the dart in the circle, they win a prize. If it's impossible to miss the board, okay, so they throw a dart, it has to hit somewhere in here. Okay, so that's telling you there's a 100% probability or probability of one that the dart will lie somewhere in this region. We want to know what's the probability they win a prize. So we want to know what is the probability if they hit somewhere on the board that I've just um, shaded in blue, what's the probability that they get it in the circle. Okay, so this is about using um, measurement and area formulas to work out what probability that would be. So we want to know, so the probability of winning a prize is going to be the area of the circle, which is where they have to hit to win a prize, over the area of the board, the total area of the board, including the circle. Okay, so the area of the circle, circle is pi r squared, the radius of this um, circle is 10. Okay, so this is pi times 10 squared for the area of the circle, and the area of the board is 100 times 50. All right, so that's 100 pi over um, 5,000, you can divide by 100, so that's pi over 50. Okay, again, we don't want to, we're not going to write that as a decimal because pi is an irrational number. As a decimal, it's a um, non-recurring, non-repeating decimal, so the only exact way to write it is pi. But pi over 50 is a number that's less than 1, so it's between 0 and 1. Pi remembers about, you know, just over 3, so 3 divided by 50 is definitely a uh, number between 0 and 1. Okay, part B, if it is known that 15% of competitors will miss the board completely, what is the probability, correct to four decimal places, of winning a prize? Okay, so if they hit the board, the probability of winning a prize is pi on 50, but there's actually only an 85% chance that they win, they hit the board. So the probability of a prize, they have to first hit the board, so that's 0.85, multiplied by... Um, the probability that then once they they're going to if they hit the board that they actually hit the circle which is pi on 50 okay so it says um, what is the probability correct to four decimal places so here I'm going to type this into my calculator 0.85 times pi over 50 control enter so four decimal places 0 0.0534 so it's a pretty small probability. Let's just check what that original without the without the 0.85. Oh, sorry, it does say, sorry, in part A it said, give your answer exactly and then round it to four decimal places. So let me get that while I'm here.
so that one was this 0.0628 okay that would be the probability of uh, winning a prize assuming that everybody hits the board but if 15% um, of the competitors miss the ball completely, there's now only an 85% chance of hitting the board times the probability of winning a prize when you do hit the board. Okay, so the work today is from exercise 8A.